Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Sorry I've been busy. I uh, wanted to share a new toy, new utility, new little project that I got. I uh, wanted to uh, get my input and if anybody's curious, uh, get my two cents on why I got this, what I got. So these are called K-Series, or mini trucks, or uh, JDM cars. So this is your uh, standard stuff you get from Japan. This is imported. You can't get American ones. Uh, so the steering is on the left side like it's supposed to. I had a couple of those. I'll give you my reasoning why I have this instead of those now. So let's get started with this. Uh, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll be posting more content on this uh, as I'm going through updating maintenance. And if you see anything you like, you want to know why I have it that way or how I built it, just just put in the comments and I'll try to upload video or uh, you know share pictures or whatever I could to help out the community. So the this particular K truck, or in India as we call them, little elephant, is the Subaru brand. So if you're not familiar with these K-Trucks, there are certain regulation that Japan requires to have these in the street. So you can get them fire truck, you, you know, and pretty much a dump bed, any kind of situation you like. So for my purpose here, we live a, in a, a good size uh, land. My drive is about a mile long, so I always use these or always had these. The American ones are newer. You can get a fuel injected engines. You, you know, they're, they're typically rear-wheel drive. You can get electric. So I own a bunch of those in between. Um, and I also had ATVs and side by side. I prefer these over that reasoning. They're they're cheaper They have heat you can get AC they have windows they have lights and if you get the imported one the reason To get one of these is you can get tags on them. So in my case, I have historic tags. It's over 25 years old uh, That's the minimum you can import. Uh, so this has happened to be 98 and if you're looking at one um you know, you'll be in the same situation I was, which model, which brand to go with. And I'll give you, again, my reasoning why I went with Subaru and this particular truck. Uh, so this one's Subaru. It's called Sandbar, uh, like a deer or something. That's what it translates to. Um, one reason, a bigger cab. So this one actually, same size cab, but Subaru had figured out how to go give you more leg room. So in this, there's more leg room compared to Honda's. Of course, they're made by Hondas, Toyotas, and Suzuki's and Mitsubishi's. Um, that's one reason it's more cab room. The other reason is typically the I believe the the Hatsuits and the Suzuki's have engines under the seat or right behind the seat, so it's a bit noisier. Uh, I don't like those. I had one of those. Uh, in the summer, you always get your butt, you know, your tushy gets a little hot. So I prefer the engine to be somewhere other than here. Um, also, Subarus are five speed, and some of the new Hondas, I think Suzuki's are going five speed. And Subaru also is selectable four wheel drive uh, right here with push button. So typically, just like a truck around here, you run two wheel drive when you need it, you hit this button, it's good to go. And also, with this, I have an extra low gear, which means if I'm climbing with a load, I can just stick an extra low, it kicks in four wheel drive, and I can just keep on going. So I kind of like that about Subaru. I like their layout. Uh, this one does not have a locking dish or AC, which I didn't care for both of them because I'm not planning on doing serious off-roading. Uh, as you can see by the tires, I got snow tires, so it'll probably eventually get a snow plow, and I might just do a different uh, set of wheels and tires, or the original set of wheels and tires, with uh, snow tires on them so that way I can run a, a plow without any issue. The other reason I went with Subaru, like I said, the engine's not there, so which means it's here. So typically if you go with Honda Actis, the engine's gonna be in the center, a bit, little bit harder to work with. Uh, again, not complicated. These things have plenty of room. If you see underneath of it, I mean, it's just, pretty much you can access anything through here. Um, it's very, very easy to work on. Compared to ATVs, you got all the amenities. Um, so it's not in the middle and it's in the back. So I like this setup because the engine sitting on the axle, you're running two wheel drive. It makes uh, handling a lot better. Uh, you don't have to wait on it to have a good traction in the snowy, run, you know, rainy days. Uh, it handles like a go kart, in my opinion, to me, you know, with that setup. It's a almost perfect 50 50 weight transfer uh, on this. And Subaru also has a bigger engine, uh, bigger. Um, not bigger engine, they're all 660, 
but uh, a four cylinder versus three I believe the, all the other brands have three cylinder and this one is a four and it's a clover four uh, one of their uh, well-known engine runs forever uh, does require a little maintenance it's fuel it's uh, carbureted um, just like anything else old school so that's another reason it's very easy you basically pop the rear bumper uh, you know unlatch it and you're right there is your engine you can do whatever you need time of bolts right there spark plugs right there and the top cover is to access your air filter carburetor or anything else you want to do to it so that is one re another reason I went with Subaru and the the third I guess the fourth reason is the suspension so Subaru as far as I know is the only one with the independent suspension all four corners not just front and I believe Honda's uh, Suzuki's and everything else they come with leaf springs on the back uh, they're great a bit bouncy great for loading uh, I like the independent because it's better for handling it's better on the road it's 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 squishier ride and having the engine back here you have a less noise in the cab so the only thing you get is wind noise up there so they run a little bit quieter and having independent suspension you have a much better option of building custom suspension um, that actually works um, so speed on these because a lot of people ask hey, how fast it goes so personally with the GPS I have gone 75 80 comfortably I mean easily it can probably do more I, I as I said I just got um, I don't know if I said that yet uh, got it about three weeks less than a month ago and I'm still going through as they're 25 years old still going through the maintenance just to make sure it's 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 good and I've been putting through its paces um, you know done the transmission flush there's videos for all of that if you guys want to know uh, look into you know if you need any info on it just put it in a message and I'll try to answer or try to put a video if you want to learn how to do certain things on it but there's a really great community you can pretty much ask anybody any question that owns one of these and why they have it and the second reason or I guess fourth or fifth reason is the the bed this is a bigger bed than my Rivian if you've seen my videos I have a Rivian and it's a four and a half by five foot bed this one's 4.8 by six plus foot bed and it's low so which means you know it's probably a little over two feet from the ground so that's 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 pretty low so nice thing about these you can just throw stuff in it home depot runs are great i've you know payload is only 350 kg eight nine hundred pounds somewhere there or maybe a thousand pounds whatever that translates to uh it's a heck of a lot more than that i can personally tell you i've driven 20 plus miles with a pallet of tiles uh, which is probably two plus thousand pounds, 700 square feet, 12 by 12 tiles. Um, no issues. So, I mean, it's not fast. It'll, it'll make it to 55, 60. If you're a patient, take your time and just be in the right lane and do the right thing. So these things are very, very utility. That's why we call them little elephants in India. Cause you, if you can load it, you can pretty much go across town with it or go to Home Depot or wherever you want to. A um, couple days ago, I had full of uh, this bed was stacked up high with the firewood. Uh, I cut a tree down at, at my other property and, and I had to bring it here. That was about 60 miles. Yes, I made it home 60 miles through the highway, 495, 95. You know that crazy traffic. So these things are very utility, and that's the reason I went with Subaru. Um, like I said, these are much better than buying ATV or side by side because I had, you know, I, I, I had all of that. And I find these to be, you know, snowy days, you got a heat, you got a wipers, you got lights. Rainy days, again, you got windows, doors, you know. So these things are much more practical. And you can get these with dump bed. Uh, I specifically don't care for the one. I have a dump trailer that I use. And uh, these things, they thought of everything. I mean, little hooks to hook your straps or if you want to get a, a top cover for it. I'm planning on building a ladder rack to it. Uh, you know, a little sidestep right there, a battery's right there, the gas tank's right there. So the working on these things is easy. And they're light. They're 13, 1400 pounds somewhere there. And they carry their weight. I mean, they carry more than their weight as long as you're patient. Uh, they're little workhorses. So this one, if you're looking into getting a case, uh, a truck or a little elephant, whatever you want to call this in your culture, um, a couple quick things I'll tell you if you're looking into it. Don't look at the mileage. Speedos can be swapped out. These are mechanical Speedos. Because um, I've seen at lots or in, in online, people have, you know, 10,000 kilometers, 30,000 kilometers, and the truck is just rusty and beat up. So if you're looking, look for the body of the truck. 
look at the frame so like in this case this is original frame never been painted because there's a VIN number right there on the frame um, so if you don't see rust on the frame don't see rust around the fender welds um, don't see rust when you step in there's a minor rust from rubbing that's given but don't see rust around there uh, don't see rust around the windows the surface rust like this in this case or some spots here little things here that's typical in these and remember this is 25 years old like i have a rough spot here these can be touched up but if you're in the market look for the main chassis and another thing subaru does have i believe honda might have it it's a ladder frame i think uh mitsubishi and maybe i forgot what other brand they use unibody so this is a truck base like legit truck base frame that goes back forward back so those are the little things that I would look for, you know, paint and a lot of people get a lot of rust here. I'm missing the the, the sealant here. Uh, I'll fix it up. But, you know, overall, so this truck had 89,000 kilometers on it. That's a lot. Well, 50-ish thousand miles. That's a lot. I could have gone with the one with 30,000 miles, but this looked newer in condition to me. So that's what I went with. So don't be afraid about miles. The engines are cheap to get from Japan. Or you can just throw in a, you know, Hayabusa motor or whatever you like. There's, there's all kind of mods you can do to it. Again, I don't want to keep rambling. So hopefully this is was a helpful video. Why to go with what truck and you know, uh, there's a great community again uh, online. There's forums. You can look up all kind of information and these things are just very, very popular, uh, very convenient, uh, uh, like a real truck. It's, probably like a Tacoma or F-150 you can you can do things with these and they're convenient anyway on that note I wanna, don't want to keep rumbling please uh, hopefully you'll like these kind of things like subscribe and share and enjoy a gorgeous day it's, it's fall and it's gonna be a nice one again take care have a good one